You're joining us for 21 Days of Prayer here on Pursuing God with Gene Apple. Here's Gene. Well, thank you for joining me in Pursuing God through a 21 Days of Prayer journey. Uh, yesterday, we learned two kinds of prayer from Jesus in Matthew 6 as we looked at the model prayer, uh, commonly called the Lord's Prayer. Uh, today, we're going to look at three other directives for your prayer life from this same teaching. It's found in verses 11 through 13 of Matthew 6. The first of these is to ask God for his provision. It means to pray something like, God, give us today our daily bread. It's, it's just acknowledging that we understand we're ultimately dependent on God for everything that we have and everything we need. It all belongs to him. This is acknowledging we're inadequate. He is more than adequate. And I think, frankly, this kind of humble submission is tough for some of us guys who, you know, we want to project macho, uh, type A personalities. I've got everything under control kind of image. And for us to hum humbly pray, Lord, I'm dependent on you. Or the thought of demonstrating your dependence by kneeling in prayer, it's hard. Guys, I think most of us would be embarrassed if a friend or a roommate or our wives or children opened the door and saw us on our knees, right? We'd immediately say, oh, I lost a contact or something down here. And this is why it takes humility to say, God, I'm dependent on you for everything, even my daily bread. And notice Jesus didn't say to pray, God, give us our daily lobster roll, sushi and triple venti, half sweet, non-fat, caramel macchiato, but give us our daily bread. And Jesus goes on. We see another aspect of vital prayer life is confession, which means asking God really to forgive our sins. And that may be the hardest part of praying, but Jesus said, when you pray, there ought to be a confession component where you pray, God, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now we struggle this with this because maybe the two hardest words in the English language to say are the two words, I'm sorry. But Jesus says when you pray, there ought to be a confession component. God, forgive me for mismanaging my finances or trying to fill the void in my life with things when only you can fill the hole in my soul. God, forgive me for trying to drive our son, our daughter to you, rather than allowing them to be drawn to your incredible love by your spirit. God, forgive my lack of patience and kindness with my kids or in my marriage. God, forgive my hatred for someone that you love and sent Jesus to die to. Friends, can I ask you, when was the last time you just said, God, before I go any further in this prayer, I want to list my foul ups in the last 24 hours, the last week, the harsh words I said, the things I've thought that don't honor you, the exaggerations, the lies, the cruelty, I confess those sins to you so I can receive your grace and be restored. And then finally, Jesus teaches we need to ask God for protection. He said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. As followers of Jesus, we face a spiritual battle with the evil one every day. So one of the prayers I pray regularly is, Lord, put a hedge of protection around my life, around my family, my kids, my grandkids, around this church to protect us from the evil one, protect us from apathy, protect us from destruction within or without, protect us from disunity or immorality. If I asked you to identify the biggest temptation in your life, most of you probably wouldn't have any trouble thinking of it immediately. You might be embarrassed, but you know what it is. Just whether it's lust, a substance, greed, lying, hate, gossip. And we need to pray, Lord, I'm weak, so lead me not into temptation. I read a little bit about a little boy who prayed that God would help him save enough money to buy a new baseball glove. He saved all winter. And then just about the time he had enough money, he prayed this prayer, Lord, Help me to keep saving enough for my new baseball glove. And Lord, please don't let the ice cream truck drive down my street. <laughs> Some temptations are so difficult to deal with that we need to pray that the Lord would deliver us from the evil one. And I believe Satan trembles when he sees the weakest Christian on their knees. So let's go to our knees in a brief moment. Let's ask him to forgive us, to keep us from temptation and to provide for what we need today. Could you just pray right now?
Didn't that feel good to pray? You're protected, you're forgiven. Be strong as you go from here. And I'll see you for day 11 of 21 Days of Prayer tomorrow. You're joining us for 21 Days of Prayer here on Pursuing God with Gene Apple. 